Our final speaker today is Sarah Novotny, who is with Microsoft in the Azure office of the CDO. Uh, in her recent years, she has focused on open source, cloud, and utility computing, infrastructure automation, and data, big and small, relational and non-relational. Today, she's going to be talking about some of the enduring lessons of 2020. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Novotny from Microsoft. Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I want to chat about enduring lessons in open source technology more broadly and definitely specifically learned from 2020. So let's just take a moment and have a big breath because 2020 is almost over and it has been a deeply weird year. Doesn't matter where you live or what your interests or persuasions are, this year has been hard. So take a moment with yourself and say, we're almost done. There's a lot of cleanup ahead of us, but we're almost done with 2020. So I wanna talk about people because within 2020, I have found that very few of my problems have been technological problems. They've frequently and usually been people problems and people challenges and ways that the people interact with each other and the world that are the hard bit. So let's talk about the world for a moment. This year, this year has been long and hard. And of course, in March, February and March, we were actually uh, hit with the coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic. This has led to so much change in the world in the last nine months that we really are struggling with all of these changes. Most of us, many of us are working from home a lot and that is completely different, making our engagements with our peers, engagements with our projects completely different. And that is something that we really need to understand, especially as we look toward a global workforce that can work on our technological problems around the world with all these different perspectives. Come summer, we found that the US is still deeply, deeply divided and suffering from systemic racism. Well, we found this out. We, many of the privileged white people who are not able to, or not experiencing this challenge on a day to day, are su were suddenly brought to attention for the challenges that are facing our peers and friends and people of color within our communities. That is incredibly important as a thing that we need to work on. We also struggle this year with the fact that global warming is not a little thing. The West Coast of the US is on fire and the way fires are behaving is changing because of the problems and challenges with our global climate change. It's tough to say, you know, that this is that this is anything but a global problem when it runs the gamut from fires in the West Coast of the U.S. or fires in Siberia to methane escape in the Arctic Circle. And methane does so much more damage than even carbon dioxide to our world. We really need to focus on all of these things. So it's been a rough year. And I hope that most of you have gotten the support and guidance that you've needed, have been able to connect with people at work, felt supported in work, been able to connect with your social circles, your communities that you engage with and feel supported in those, and that you've been able to support other people in this. What I have found in these communities is seeking out someone else's perspective, which is completely different from my own has strengthened and deepened and opened my eyes to the change that is needed in the world. Learning from people who have different perspectives and then being able to share and grow and interact with those around you who may not have had those same experiences is a way that we can continually improve our world. And we need to be focused on that at this point. 
in order to make sure that we are impacting things that are important and consistent, we need to make sure that we are measuring things that we want to change, not necessarily measuring second order effects, but measuring directly the changes we need. We need to make sure that we are listening and engaging across differences and making sure that we are able to internalize what we hear. Just listening and trying to respond or trying to argue is not enough. Listening, internalizing, synthesizing, and maybe even changing your own opinions about this, about whatever you're listening to from this different perspective is very important today. And empathizing. We need to make sure that everyone's experiences become more equal. Today, my wish to join a person of color or be a person of color in a particular experience would be very low. I recognize that they have a very different experience in the U.S. at least and across some portions of the globe as well. But I recognize that they have a very different experience and I have to be empathetic because how they interact, how I interact in a world that has such different experiences is super important. It's really important because we want to get back to a world where we can interact with people, where we can be focused on what we are interested in while the rest of the world is moving around us without nearly as much effort and attention as we have had to put into it this year. But that means we need to fix underpinning systemic challenges. We have an incredibly divided world right now. We have a world that is moving more toward nationalism and less toward collaboration in a global economy. That's, that's worrisome. We need to be paying attention and collaborating across those people who are happy with the policies and those people who are unhappy with policies. It's work that needs to be done. And that work is not glamorous. That work is work that we need to do in every one of our communities, open source communities, preschool communities, city communities. And we need to make sure that we are able to and invested in doing the unglamorous work, doing the heavy lifting that change requires. And when we see change that's happening and behaviors that are supporting that change, we need to be sure that we're rewarding those behaviors. We're celebrating the people that are making that change. We're celebrating the way that change is happening. And most of all, in all of this, especially since we are technologists who are building tools and building new ways to engage with the world, we need to make sure our tools cannot be weaponized and that our tools respect privacy and do good in the world. Any tool can become a weapon, but starting from the premise of how to limit any damage created by this tool is also an important ethical consideration as you're developing something. Just because it can be developed, just because it can be a product, doesn't always mean it should be. I'm looking forward to 2021. I think there's a lot of possibility ahead of us. I think there's also a lot of work ahead of us. But I wanted to end on a happy note. I wanted to end saying, whoop, saying respect your privacy for sure. But I wanted to end and go through 21 with a positive note, wherein I want to say you're amazing. And your amazingness in this world is brought to bear on every decision you make, your team makes, and your communities make around you. So please reach across any divide you see, any challenge you find, any hard conversation that needs to be had, reach across those differences and try to come to some sort of understanding. And if not even understanding, respect for the individual who is presenting that opinion, because we still are humans and human dignity is an important part of our growth through this very difficult year of 2020. 
and on to the hope and potential of 2021. So my last recommendation for 2021, given the year we've had in the past, is to make sure that, that there is space for fun and novelty. Because one of the things that we have been most missing in our year 2020 is the serendipity and novelty of random interactions with friends, with people on the street, with someone in a coffee shop. So be silly, have a bit of fun, go out and do good in the world. Thanks very much. 